U.S. head coach April Heinrichs has had a lot to smile about lately. Playing the role of ungracious host, the States has controlled Nike U.S. Women's Cup play. The U.S. recipe has been simple. Strength in the backfield, combined with younger stars coming of age, and a mix of renewed veteran prowess and proven leadership. Can they fulfill their destiny and raise the Nike U.S. Women's Cup for the eighth straight time? Find out next. North Carolina for the final U.S. match in this year's edition of the Nike U.S. Women's Cup with two wins already. The States needs only a tie today versus Italy, and the hardware will be theirs. Glad you're with us this Sunday afternoon alongside Wendy Gabauer Palladino. I'm Rob Stone. It has been an absolutely dominant U.S. team thus far this tournament. Two victories, outscoring their opposition 9-1, to but defensively they've been particularly solid. Three shutouts in the last five games. Brandi Chastain has really stood out. She deserves a ton of credit, Rob, as you mentioned, and she's just playing some of the best soccer of her life, and she has assumed the leadership role that has been vacated by the retiring Carla Overbeck. And uh, not only will you see her lead through her play, you'll see her through her passion, but she is vocally leading this entire team, both offensively and defensively, all over the field so they can combine into one cohesive unit. And leading the team offensively, Cindy Parlow. Three goals already in this tournament. And six goals in the last four games. Astounding statistics. The other team's defenses just don't know how to stop her. Typically, she's been very good in the air, but in the last match, she actually scored two goals with the outside of her right foot. Just making good runs in the box. Other teams just can't deal with her size. A big horse in the middle, and it'll be a lot for Italy to deal with. Three of the top five all-time female goal scorers are here today. We'll tell you more about that and have kickoff once we return to Cary, North Carolina. It's the U.S. and Italy when we're back. Wow. That is so cool. Can he do it again? Sure. Go get one, boy. Okay, so where does he get him? Yeah. I don't know. Get down! The great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Oh, that's a first. Make it a Bud Light. What do international cyclists think about the Norelco Advantage Razor? In Germany, we are using blades. They are much more better. I'm really more of a blade guy. They had their doubts, but they were intrigued by this highly technical wet shave innovation. What is this? Goo? Goo. Goo. This lotion set up an unbelievably close wet shave, even in the shower. That is good. After a few weeks of no nicks and cuts from blades, their faces became smooth. They, however, did not. The Norelco Advantage, the only electric razor with built-in shaving lotion. Cars you can depend on. The cars that last. You never had to look too far. Chevy. We'll be there. Always with you. Jennifer Garner is Sydney Bristow, a top secret, undercover master of disguise government agent who's so hot, TV Guide needs three separate covers just to cover her. Freeze. Alias, get into the adventure Sunday at 9, 8 central on ABC. Hey, sport fans, now get the Yamaha ATV of your choice for 0.0 APR with zero down. That's every Yamaha ATV from the incredible 660R Raptor to the lightning fast Banshee to the new Blaster, all for 0.0 APR. So see your Yamaha dealer today and choose your sport. Get your new Yamaha at Woods Fun Center in Austin. Time Warner Cable offers you the greatest value in entertainment. No hidden fees. Local customer service, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Pass on the dish. We get all the local channels. No catches. No kidding. Time Warner Cable. The very best in TV keeps getting better. 
Today's U.S. Women's National Team match is brought to you by Chevy. The cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. By Phillips at Phillips Electronics. We're dedicated to making the U.S. soccer fan experience even better. Phillips Electronics, let's make things better. And by Bud Light, official beer of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina. We're just moments away from kickoff between Italy and the United States. The Italians, led by talented forward Rita Guarino. 16 international goals, and one of those came Wednesday evening versus Russia. Although Italy was not successful against Russia, they lost 2-1 to one in this match on Wednesday night. Guarino had a good, a real good, solid game up top. She's the kind of, kind of player who's going to work hard to find the back of the net, not only in the run of play, but also on set pieces. Take a look at the standings thus far for the Nike U.S. Women's Cup. The U.S. all alone on top with six points. Australia, Russia second with third. And Italy seeking their first points of the tournament today versus the U.S. And the tournament will actually conclude Wednesday. And here's a look at the Italy starting netminer, Fabiana Comin. Just her seventh international appearance today. And on the flip side, it'll be Siri Molnix making her second consecutive start. She will only play one half of this game. Brianna Scurry will come in at halftime, barring an earlier injury by Siri Molnix. And we are underway. Italy in the all-white. They quickly go negative. U.S. in the red tops, blue shorts, Italy all white. Probably you can see early on the U.S. is trying to really put a lot of pressure on this Italian defense. Typically they'll pay, play low pressure unless the ball is out on the flanks in the Italian defense, and then they'll go high pressure if they think that they can win it. That's exactly what we saw Parlo do there, making a, putting a stamp on this match right away. This portion of the match brought to you by Bud Light. Christine Lilly, your Avaya starting lineup for Italy. The Italians pretty much always play in a 4-4-2. And in front of Comin, who will be in the nets, they'll play a four-man defense. Pirelli on the right side, Camparisi, Boni, and Conti. Also four players in the midfield, as you alluded to, Rob. These four players will have to shut down the likes of the U.S. midfield, who is playing very, very well. And then up top, we talked about Guarino already. She will be combining with number 19, Gazzoli. Molnix plays it wide, and Kate Sobrero, still looking for her first international goal, finds Julie Fowdy, who again, we see playing kind of on that right-sided midfielder spot. Look at your U.S. starting lineup, brought to you by Avaya. And again, it is another 4-4-2 at the diamond midfield, again being implemented by April Heinrichs. And in front of Molinix in the defense, you see some same names as we saw on Wednesday night. Slayton on the left side, Chastain Fawcett, great leaders in the middle, and Sobrera flanks the right side. And in the midfield, again, we talked about this diamond midfield uh, shape. You see it there. Fair played a great game in the defensive midfield position, so she gets the start again today over Tiffany Roberts. Both great defensive midfielders, and in fact, the only two that naturally played defensive defensively on this uh, team and up front. McMillan will combine with Carlo. Mia Hamm will come off the bench. A tactical decision by April Heinrichs to try and see if that's a good tactical decision. After Italy gets tired, 30, 45 minutes, Mia Hamm comes in and, and uh, puts the fear in this defensive line. Mia certainly will come into this game, most likely at the start of the second half. And it's a position that she's very accustomed to, spent just about her entire season in the WSA at the Washington Freedom, starting on the bench where she is right now and coming off. And, boy, you got to think, Italy is not going to enjoy having to play 45 minutes versus arguably the top team in the world and then to have arguably the top player in the world come off the bench with fresh legs. And as well, you've got to figure that they've spent a lot of their pregame trying to figure out how to stop her. So this puts a kink in, in, in uh, how Marachi will adjust with her squad early on here. Free kick, Fowdy, the captain, looking for Parlo. Instead, Chastain, all kinds of time to do a little juggling demo. The volley, she popped that one up. Chastain put the keeper under pressure. And that will be a goalkeeper under pressure all afternoon. 
getting out of danger. Gazzoli sends a long ball to midfield. There's Joy Fawcett. So steady, so secure back there. It's the 10th all-time meeting between these two countries in women's soccer. And the U.S. women's national team program actually opened up their history versus Italy back in 1985. And the interesting thing about this matchup um, is that we used to play Italy all the time, Rob, in the early days, and the U.S. hasn't faced them a lot lately. Their program hasn't been quite as prominent as it used to be. And in fact, actually, a lot of the players that were on the U.S. team back in the late 80s and early 90s, actually, most of the late 80s, go, went and played over in the uh, Italian professional league, including April Heinrich. So not surprising that Maracci is the, the Italian coach, is one of the leaders in the uh, goal scoring category because the leagues over there were actually the premier leagues at the time in the world for the women to play in. It's been a tough go lately for the Italian women's national team program, a first round exit from the 99 Women's World Cup, and they failed to qualify for it next fall's 2003 edition in China. Zori will take the throw in. Quickly one back. Christine Lilly plays it back. There's Chastain, swings it to Sobrero. Italy has really dropped back into a low restraining end. Their forwards are actually at the midfield stripe. So players like Lori Fair here, she had this kind of time against Australia. She's going to be serving these types of balls all day long. It's going to be key for her to change the point of the attack as quickly as possible. Lily broken up there by Tatiana Zori. Lily looking for the quick counterattack. They couldn't even get it to midfield. Gazzoli. Another long ball from Italy going over the top. There is Gazzoli, one-time ball, right to Siri Molnix. Nice little break by the Italians. I liked how Molnix came out there. It looked like she was trying to put some pressure on uh, Gazzoli to make her think that she was totally committed. She dropped back just a bit, and Gazzoli hit kind of a soft pass trying to chip her, and Molnix made the save. Some of the goals of the match that we got from our meeting with April Heinrichs a little earlier today. She wants tremendous speed of play. We're seeing that already here by the U.S. She wants organization offensively and defensively. And she wants a replication of the first half against Australia. She felt like that was the best half that this U.S. team has played in this system. This portion of the match brought to you by Shell. There's a look at the history of the Azura, which is female for Azuri, as the Italian national team is so often called. And there's a good look at her head coach, Carolina Moracci, retired in 1997, 105 career goals, third most in women's history. Number one, of course, Mia Hamm will be coming in later in this game. There's 30 goals behind Meehan right now on the all-time goal scoring list, and that number is only going to grow greater. It may grow greater today. Here's Lori Fair. She was very active Wednesday in their dominating performance versus Australia. Lady Matilda just gave her a ton of time in the middle of the park to do pretty much what she wanted. I brushed upon her a little bit in the, in the lineups when I was talking about the midfielders, but really this U.S. team has two naturally defensive midfielders. If you talk about the diamond midfield, April Heinrichs calls this, I'm going to come back to this in one second here. Barlow and Euclid's trying to get something going, that one broken up. She refers to this diamond midfield as actually four attack, or four center midfielders, but the, the role of Lori Fair and Tiffany Roberts when she's in there is First and foremost, defense, and that's what Lori did so well, which gave her the, the start again today. Lily offside. Yep, here we go. This is the uh, low restraining line. Look, this is the midfield line. This is almost unheard of that they're giving this defense for the United States so much time. giveaway Angela Hughes with the interception couldn't quite maintain possession Lily fights for it broken up Tatino plays it wide to Zori the Italians Wendy early on have been looking to kind of elude the midfield and play over the top and they do it again and hook up there with Panico another floated ball Sobrero and Gazzoli battle another long ball slide it in chastain there to win it now well, we have seen the game plan for the italian offense early 
go over the top. Is that a weakness in the U.S. back line? Well, I'm not surprised that Italy's trying to come after him early in this game because if you remember the best chance in probably the first 20 minutes on Wednesday night's game was actually Australia and it was a defensive breakdown. Here's one right here. So it was a defensive breakdown and you know Italy has probably scouted that game through and through and realized that you know if we put the U.S. under pressure before we let them get into their speed of play and get their rhythm established before they get on the scoreboard we might be able to stick one in the back of the net. And you're right Rob they're bypassing this midfield. Back to Comin, has to drill a lefty. Foudy up to win it. McMillan, one-time ball. Parlo is onside. Parlo, boom, save. Comin. Just like that, the U.S. can put together a nasty scoring opportunity. Tactically, unbelievably organized. The whole Italian defense stopped. They thought that Cindy Parlo was offside. Hey, that's rule number one if you're a goaltender or a defender. Always play it until the whistle. Exactly, and that's a great way to get burned is to stop. Just that half a step is all that those forwards need in order to get behind them. It all started with a great header by Julie Foudy. That's Shannon McMillan flicking it through to Cindy Parlow. She started her run on sides. What I wish she would have done is maybe her teammates need to talk to her a little bit more. She had both of those defenders on her back. Take it down, dribble it in, and maybe have some decisions to beat the goalkeeper coming out. Again, another long ball from Italy over the top. Gazzoli saves it, but Sobrero corrals it and plays it to Fawcett. Joy swings it to Danielle Slayton. And you're getting the sense that April Heinrichs has pretty much set herself to this back four for the long haul, at least. Second straight game, these four have started in this position. Another crew ball, Carlo trying to find McMillan. Comin off her line. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. Slayton, McMillan, one time ball to Lily. Lily could not handle it. To look at Shannon McMillan. You, you look at the middle of her noggin there. She has a band aid on it. Took a gash while playing hide and seek with Joy's 18 month old daughter, Maddie. Right? So Shannon is hiding underneath the table trying to hide from Maddie. But Maddie ends up coming from behind Shannon, scaring her, and she nails her head on the table. Getting out foxed by an 18 month year old. Uh, I'm not sure that was a word. An 18 month old. Come on, Shannon, you're better than that. Speaking of Shannon, this is a very important game for her. She has been, well, very inconsistent, not playing her best ball. Confidence is a little bit low, and, and the team and the staff know that. And uh, it's an important start for Shannon right now to try and earn some more playing time with this program and, and perhaps even earn a roster spot. All great points you made, Robin. Uh, because of Wagner being gone, she's competing with her collegiate team and with uh, Ham coming off the bench for tactical reasons. That opened up a chance for McMillan to get a big game here. And you're right, she needs to really show what she's made of. She's been battling injuries, has just not had a consistent presence. Although if you look at her goals, she's done phenomenally well. I believe she has 13 goals for the year. And uh, so she's putting the ball in the back of the net, but they're looking for, for a little bit more than that. Great work rate defensively. To name, to name one thing. So she's got a great chance to shine here today and play with a lot of confidence. She had a goal Wednesday off of a corner kick. One of those goals that could have been an own goal or or just a goal for Shannon. But you see 13 goals. She has three multi-goal games this year, including two hat tricks. But those numbers somewhat misleading. And so many of those goals came early on in the campaign, early on this year. Since then, through the spring, summer, and as we head into fall right now, the numbers have certainly gone downhill somewhat. Well, and she's actually, uh, and during that time, when she wasn't playing as consistently, it was during some injuries that she was suffering with the San Diego Spirit and the WSA. Carla, a nice little move down the right side, but finally, the double team, she cannot elude. Conti just clears it out, deep throw in for the States. Foudy. Yes, he's quicker, quicker, quicker. Spins, serves. Miscommunication with Miller. 
does not make the peg. You've got to put those away. Julie Foudy throw, and she tells Carla, go ahead and turn. Carla serves a beautiful ball back. McMillan gets this pass. She's got all kinds of options there. She can go right or left and hits it wide right. As you said, Rob, she's got to finish those chances. She'd love to have that one back. Hideous miscommunication between the defender, Zori, and the keeper, Comey. And a beautiful ball by Carla. She just kind of put it in there, kind of in the gray area where does the keeper come in or do the defenders play it? That's an unbelievably dangerous ball. Beautifully served by Parlo. Good defensive work there by Parlo as well. City herself coming off a of so-so WUSA season, but boy, she puts on that red, white, and blue. She really seems to ratchet up that level. One of six U.S. Female players all time to hit the 50 goal plateau. She has 52 career goals. Three this tournament, tied for first among all among goal scorers for this tournament in this year's edition. Campo Risa, the long ball. Here's Lori Fair. Splits two defenders trying to find McMillan. Lily in the middle of the park. Hugh Cleese bumped off the ball. Play on. Nice little give and go as Joy Fawcett sends Panico to the turf. Tatino chips it. Slayton with Boney on her back and she'll give up and throw it. ESPN2 wraps up its coverage of the WTA Ladies Kremlin Cup from Moscow Davenport. Lindsay Davenport in the final. Now will be coming up next from Moscow, Russia. Please, there to win it at the top of the box. Parlo tracks back to keep possession for the U.S. Foudy, one-time ball, pops it up. Malio and Italy regains. Outside of that one, real poor miscommunication by the Italian defense. Overall, as a team, they've looked fairly solid. Well, the U.S. is giving them a lot of uh, space here. You can see this is where the restraining line is. It's about a yard in front of that midfield circle there. They're giving them a lot of time, and then they're going to try and compress it. You see the defense there. There's Joy winning that ball. That's what happens with this. They compress it. There's not a lot of space for Italy to work in when they serve those long balls over the top. McMillan, double team. That was a good idea. Trying to spring Parlo, but Parlo had come back to get on side and was not position to make that run. This portion of the match brought to you by Chevrolet. Campo Risa. That ball quickly double team closed down in the U.S. Does win back possession on the throw in. Interesting story about her. Yesterday at practice, suffered a shoulder separation. Spent about four hours at the hospital and really, really bummed her out because she was dying to play versus the States. Me and am like a god to her, according to the staff. She saw me and her eyes just bugged out. And just really wanted to get on the field and take on the U.S., but good job by Conti, just 20 years old. And get the starting nod with the shoulder separation. And yeah, they have a long flight back to Italy on Thursday. Plenty of time for that thing to heal going transatlantic, right? Yeah, absolutely. But what a great story. That's a, it's just a testament to her mentality and, you know, her obviously her desire to be playing again, playing out here. It's neat to see the young players are 
you know, you're right, Rob. Their idols are these players yeah. that they're playing against. They're the ones who want to ask for their autograph in the hotel. Well, that'll be the first corner of the game for the U.S. Cindy Parlow again. She likes to get dirty, get down low, and put that big frame to use on the turf with some of those sliding tackles. And this time it wins a corner for the States. And Shannon McMillan will take it. And look for number 14, Joy Fawcett, right in front of the keeper right now. Wednesday's game, she made a lot of near post runs on these things, caused a lot of havoc for the opposition with flick-ons and whatnot. Right now, it's Fawcett again, going near post. Try to flick it off her, instead it rams off the head of Pamela Conti in another corner for the States. Boy, there's a lot of jockeying for position. You can see that all the players, Lil has her, you see Lily's got her hands up in the air there. She's trying to play a position where she's just shielding anything that comes back near the goalkeeper to try and flick it on for a goal. Millen goes far post. Oh, Chastain, that's a savvy move to bump off her defender. I don't think she got away with it. Boy, can you tell that Cindy Parlow, we featured her at the top of the show, has had a good match so far. We get a chance here to take a look at some of her magic. She's been combining very, very well all over the field. Had a good chance here on goal. Just wish she'd taken another touch and give herself some more options. She's causing so much trouble for all these defenders. And finally, she comes up with a great serve across the box. If you remember that last chance there by Shannon McMillan, and she just wasn't able to stick it. U.S. should be up 1-0 on a lot of the work by Cindy Parlow. With a goal today for Cindy Parlow, she'll tie Karen Gabara with 53 goals, tied for fifth on the all-time U.S. women's goal scoring list. It seems like every single U.S. women's game we do, there's a stat where if somebody gets two points today, they're going to keep leapfrogging. Somebody gets a start today, they're going to move up the list. There's some storied players on this team and some more in the future. We'll profile an up-and-comer in the Lego Building Stars of tomorrow a little bit later. There's a lot of depth and talent in this U.S. US women's national team program and a lot of names you don't know yet that will become household names very, very soon. This roster is actually going to be named within the next few days and uh, for the Gold Cup qualifying, and there is a lot of pressure. You know, as we mentioned how critical uh, Shannon McMillan's job is today. She's trying to get a spot here, but some of the competition here, some unbelievable goal leaders. And there's Parlow at 52. This portion of the match brought to you by Kit Kat. There's Lori Fair spinning away. And a dicey ball broken up by Gazzoli. One time effort by Patriza Panico. Siri is there. Here's a look at it. It was a breakdown there. Bad defensive uh, ball by Lori Fair. Good chance by Italy, though, trying to combine there, and that's Panico trying to get a shot on Mullen. It's just not enough pace behind it. Zori and foul fight for it in the corner. Play on. Kimborisa eludes McMillan. Misplayed ball by the U.S. Four and Fair cannot get it. Italy tries to spring an attack for Boney, but it does not pay off. Good look at Angela Hucles getting the start today in that offensive midfield central position. When we ask April Heinrichs what the, the goal was for Hucles, obviously she's one of these players who's in the mix, but on the bubble, so to speak. And uh, what April come back to it in one minute here. McMillan to Parlo, sizing up her options, floats it in. Lily, one time effort, saved by Kobe. What Heinrich wants to see out of Euclid is a good 45 minutes nonstop. Great ball here through by McMillan. Again, Parlo timing her run so beautifully, stays on side. She's got Lily on the back post, bends it back. A little bit out of Lily's run there, but Lily works hard to get a nice shot off. I'm not sure Lily was the first option or the intended player on that pass. Seemed more to be McMillan. There's Parlo trying to fight to win it back. Instead, it's Italy. Valentina Boni down the right side. Again, another long ball. Attempted flick on by Panico. Instead, the U.S. settles it. 
Italy almost too rushed in their attack. They have more time to kind of string together some simpler balls, but they seem so set on striking that long ball over the top. They are doing a good job, too, to win some, some loose balls and some errant play out of this U.S. midfield here. Seems to not quite be as sharp as they were on Wednesday night. And the one thing that I'm noticing is, if you remember, we talked about Christine Lilly a lot in that game, and she had one of the best games of the year for this U.S., for her, for the U.S. team. And it seems like some of the play is being set out of her zone there. Again, she's got to focus on defense, both offensively and defensively. And that's one thing that she did so well in the last game. This portion of the match brought to you by Lego. 25th minute, scoreless, in Cary, North Carolina. Campo Risa with some gutsy dribbling, eluding Parlo. Look at April Heinrichs. 37 career goals with the national team, 84 points. A matchup of two high-scoring forwards now as head coaches. It's great, isn't it? A little bit of history there. April told us today, and you'd mentioned earlier, Wendy, that she's within the next 48 hours will announce her 18-player roster for the upcoming CONCACAF Gold Cup, which will serve as World Cup qualification for this this region of the world. And, of the 18 spots, she says 16 have already been booked. So somewhere out there, there are two players playing for positions. A lot of pressure, as we mentioned. You know, just a year away from the World Cup, obviously, got to qualify for it first. But there is a lot of pressure. I mean, you think about, and we talked a little bit about Shannon McMillan. You know, this is a great opportunity for her to show what she's made of getting this start here today. But, you know, she's got players like Heather O'Reilly, 17 years old, Abby Wambach, Rookie of the Year in the WSA, coming up and putting a lot of pressure on these forwards for positions. Let's not forget about Tiffany Milbrett. Not here with the team right now, but she is certainly in the mix for the Gold Cup roster. Tuesday night at 8, it's an all-new episode of the ESPN's reality series, Beg, Bar and Deal. Team Contact is spinning its wheels in Richmond. Team Kobe hops a bus to Hockey Town. Like Barlow Deal presented by Miller Lite, Tuesday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. There's a collision. I believe that's Tatino down and making sure she's not back in Italy. Just 19 years of age. Lessie Tatino. She has that almost CC-like haircut, high and tight. Sometimes you have no choice but to go high and tight. That hairstyle that never gets messed up. I hear you. There's Conti with the ball. The United States will be making an early sub. It'll be Danielle Slayton coming off for Cat Red. Slayton is. As you can see right there, a simple trap popping up on her. She's played a couple dicey balls. Not sure if there's something ailing her or what the news on that is, but that is certainly an early substitution, especially for a defensive play. Well, I would agree with you, Robin. One thing that we, we don't know and haven't been able to see specifically is whether or not that knee's bothering her. I, after she uh, played on Wednesday, she could hardly walk. I was watching her walk across the field during warm down, and, she was really, really hurting. She's got that articulate cartilage damage that she has has not had surgery for, but has, you know took some time off, and she's trying to see whether that's going to help her. Camparisa, the lefty, trying to find Panico. Instead, it's Joy Fawcett back to Siri Molinix. Again, Molinix will only be playing the first half by Anna Scurry will be coming in at the break and Sharon. we are Sharon. just about set for our substitution and here it is Catherine Reddick just a junior down the road at Chapel Hill University of North Carolina it's her 20th national team appearance Slayton comes out well, April Heinrichs told us this morning 
went in. She wanted to get Catherine Reddick more playing time, get her in earlier into the game, but I'm not sure she had this early in mind. Well, I was watching as everyone kind of congratulated Danielle, and she, she didn't seem surprised by this sub, so maybe going into the game, she knew that she had a good maybe 25 minutes to try and make an impact and hopefully not injure her knee a little bit more. So it looked to me like from, from up here that she was, she was pretty happy and the staff was, was very happy as well. But, you know, a great opportunity to get an, a, one of these youngsters, Kat Reddick, a, a chance to really show her stuff out here in this back line. She's getting to play with some of the greatest leaders in the world of women's soccer with Joy and, and Brandy in the center of the, this defense. So just a good opportunity for Katherine Reddick. And that was Reddick promptly serving up a ball to the other team. This portion of the match brought to you by Nike. Foudy, boy, read that one all the way. Intercepts it, plays it to Parlo. Spins, turns the frame, poked away. Sobrero steps up. By Italy. Feisty, scrappy, and tough. They are not backing down from the States. Foudy looking for McMillan, cleared out by Conti. Here's Hugh Cleese, back to Fawcett. Sobrero, poor throw-in, but wins it back. Given time. That's what you need to do. That left side is wide open, and she swings it to Reddick. Reddick, though, jams it right back in the middle to Hugh Cleese. Chip. McMillan onside. Boom! Just locked. And the entire Italian team is begging the officials for a foul. That U.S. attack was created. Zotti got actually taken down here by McMillan, but I just think it was in the stride. And then McMillan gets a nice shot on the left side. Nice ball, Reddick to Hughley's. Ball drops in behind. Shannon McMillan does a good job to get herself freed up. Nice attack, and that was a, a great series of serves there. Robbie, remember it started on the, uh, the change of field, complete change of field by Kate Sabrera over to Catherine Reddick. And Reddick had Lily wide open on the left to continue that, and she was not even looking that way. At the U.S. really has to get Lily more involved in this. That far left side is wide open, and you give Lily space, she is going to hammer you. And I think what Reddick had trouble with was she didn't take that ball down clean enough to actually make that an easy option for her. Panico, rather that's Gazzoli, drops it back. Camparisa, that ball deflected. Here's Carlo. Tried a little flip, try to read her, her player, Pirelli. Maybe that was a handball. Fight there by Pirelli. Foudy trying to swing it, forced it to Lily. But at least Julie recognized that they need to get her involved. And here's a break. Rita Guarino. Fawcett and Reddick in pursuit. Guarino. And it's finally broken up by Cat Reddick. Here's Lori Fair. Please. She serves up a 50-50 ball that Italy wins. This portion of the match brought to you by Avaya. Now Italy, the only team without a point in this Nike US Women's Cup, but I tell you what, they're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the States thus far. And Wendy, this is something we've seen from the US. Remember that game versus Scotland a while ago in Columbus, Ohio. I think the Scots had two on the board at halftime. Well, I would say probably at this point in the match, the coaching staff's probably not too happy. Don't have not found a lot of success as far as we, we mentioned their goals of the match. I would say they're playing with good uh, speed of play, but they're not organizing well enough defensively. They certainly haven't replicated their first half of the Australian match. We talked about that as April saying that she felt like that was the best match that this U.S. team has had all year long. Deep throw in for the States. Although U.S. has dominated the, the run of play, it seems, and they've had a couple chances, and Italy has had two fantastic chances as well. 
Julie trying to weasel a corner kick out of there. Throw in, finds Carlo. Nice one-time ball to Fair, one-time effort on the road. That is not far off target. Woo, that baby was dipping in target. We talked about the fact that the U.S. defense seems a little bit suspect. This is a great run here by Guarino. And then you can see Kat Reddick's the player that actually gotten beat, so she goes ahead and tracks back. Joy slows her down. Kat comes in, actually makes the play, and that was very, very well organized by the U.S. defense. Good recovery after they got beat. Now, when in doubt, they always tell you to focus on channeling yourself back to the middle of the park. And that's exactly what Reddick did. Here's the last shot by, shot by Fair. And, oh, look at that thing. That thing almost snuck into the upper mm. 90. Beautifully hit. Lori Fair, Wendy, has been one of those players that seems to rise and fall, rise and fall. Right now, I would say her stock is, is starting to peak again. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, it feels very, seems very comfortable, and I think part of it is, you know, in this defensive uh, midfield position, in this diamond midfield, she seems very comfortable because, as I mentioned earlier, both she and Tiffany Roberts are the two midfielders on this U.S. squad or in the pool that are pure, purely defensive-minded, although both of those players are very versatile and can play an attacking midfield role. They, they naturally settle into this defensive position well. And in these last two matchups, we've seen that the formations of the other team have allowed her to have a lot of time to change the point of the attack. Camporisa closed down by Fowdy. Forces her back and forces a turnover. It's good defensive work by the States. Quick throw in, Angela Hucles finds Parlo. Kicks it back out to Fowdy, one-time service. And Parisa on the volley, falls to Fowdy though. Still in the box, finally Italy just hammers it out. Kate Sobrero now, ready to put it right back in. Decides the better of it, Fawcett. Chastain, and Cat Red. Let's go, let's go, let's go! We're joined now field level by the head coach of the U.S. Women's National Team, April Heinrichs. And April, first off, Danielle Slayton coming off early. Was that a, a premeditated move? No, I think, uh, as Danielle said, when she came off the field, she's had better days. And, she, you know, she's been sick. She's nursing an injury. She's been sick for the last three days and uh, just hasn't felt well. And you can see when she played that uh, things weren't going well for her. April, you mentioned in the last game against Australia, you felt like your team had the best first half of the year that they've ever played. What do you think so far about this first half? Well, it's tough to have peak performances back-to-back uh, -back games. Uh, we knew that there might be a little bit of a letdown. Um, in general, we're pleased. We've been patient. Um, Italy, we're playing a low-pressure style. It Italy is hanging on to the ball at the back and quite, a, quite content to have the ball in their defensive third of the field almost. And uh, quite frankly, we could be up 2-0 and being pretty pleased, but uh, we want to improve upon this. We need to play a little bit quicker, uh, accelerate the game at times, and maybe even high pressure on a couple of times, see if we can get one. And then I don't think Italy will be so content to hang on to the ball back there. April, you've had um, obviously the run of play so far this half for the most part, but what about their, the breakdowns? They've had two great chances on goal. Yeah, I mean, that's the danger when you send the numbers forward that we send and you're committed to attack. You expose yourself to the back. Uh, again, I'd like to finish one of these chances, and uh, then the game becomes a little bit more wide open against an Italian side, and uh, I think we can put another chance away. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. This portion of the match brought to you by Bud Light. Here's Lori Fair. Ripped one just moments ago that almost found upper 90. Swings it to Pat Reddick. A substitution in the first half for Danielle Slate. Angela Hughes try to drive that one, got under it, played it over the frame. We see April Heinrichs right now taking a lot of notes on her on her notepad. She'll have plenty to discuss with her team at the break. Her toe on that effort. 
tell you one thing you always get from, from Mac is that she loves to shoot. She never passes up a half chance, but she just seems to be a little bit rusty on those shots. She actually should have two goals, in, in my opinion. The volley that went wide and also the, the defensive uh, pop-up by, by Italy right there in front of the goal. So you have somebody who's kind of in a slump like that. Do you give her the full 90 today and let her try and work herself out of that slump? Or do you make a substitution at the break and, and bring in a Mia Hamm and Abby Lombach? Well, I tell you, I mean, that's a tough call, uh, Rob, you know, because they are 0-0 right now, and she's the player that's had, had two great chances. Of course, Lori Fair had a great chance as well, but, but Shannon has had the two best chances, in my opinion, and, and her job is to put the ball in the back of the net. So if she's not getting that job done, at some point, as a coach, you've got to go ahead and make a change. Now, tactically, it's nice for the U.S. to be in a position where they can bring a Wambach and a, and a Mia Hamm in off the bench. Fresh legs. Those two players play very well together. And uh, this Italy defense has got to be getting tired. Barlow loses it. Just to remind you, the U.S. with a win or a tie this afternoon versus Italy will wrap up their eighth consecutive Nike U.S. Women's Cup title. And we talked about Shannon McMillan having a bit of trouble. This is the melee in front of the goal. You've got to finish that. You've got the right and left side of the goal. Here she gets in, does a good job of getting behind the defense. Just doesn't strike it well enough. A little bit of a spin on it. And here's this last chance here. Look like, as, as you said, Rob, she might have stubbed her toe there. But she is trying to take every shot, every half chance. She's trying to make the best of it. But she just needs to put the ball in the back of the net. And she knows she's being given an opportunity today to try and earn herself some more playing time. You have to think, though, a starting slot is almost out of question for McMillan right now, though. So much depth up top. Nice punch out there by Kobe. Valentina Boni with the ball on the right side. Looking for Guarino. She finds Panico. Joey Fawcett. Back to Sobrero. Finds with Miller. He's going over the right side. She flips it up to Fowdy. Looking for Carlo. Throwing for the States. That will stay with the U.S. Julie Fowdy by one, tripped up, free kick for the States. Shannon McMillan, Christine Lilly over this one. Keep your eye on Joy Fawcett, and Cindy Barlow, and Brandy Chastain. They are dangerous in these types of situations. McMillan chips it. That is not a good ball. Right at the keeper. Fabiana Comin giving some back talk to Cindy Parlo after that one as well. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. Oh, settled beautifully with the chest at midfield by Chastain. Euclid chips it. Lily. Settle. Flip. McMillan. Bumps off one, has it, tries to get it to Fowdy. Eventually it does, but she's in an offside position. Look at that last chance for the States. Free kick here, McMillan serves the ball in. Actually just a little bit too deep. Easy save by Comeen. She's happy that McMillan served that ball in that space. Here's a look by our Phillips goal cam. Ball just drops in there, not a lot of pressure. Parlo comes in late. That may have been why Comeen was kind of giving her a little bit of lip back there, but. Unfortunately, not well played by the U.S. A good, good chance to score, but not well executed. Forty-third minute. The U.S. has yet to have been shut out in the first half in this tournament this year. Harlow tripped up in another free piece for the States. And again, it'll be McMillan and Lilly converging on this one. This one will probably be set up. The U.S. will try and get as deep as they can. Looks like Italy is holding their line a few yards out. 
They'll set up a lot like a corner kick here. And if they treat it like a corner kick, again, look for Fawcett at the near post. Lilly runs over it. McMillan to Lilly. Too much on it, though. Sobrero sends it right back in, drills it off Christine Lilly. Angela Hughes on side. Swings it for a post. Lilly header. Point point saved by Kobe. Well, if anybody deserves a goal in this tournament, it's Christine Lilly. But the U.S. not making Cobain work for her saves, they're pretty much hitting them right at her. <laughs> Ouch. Lori Fair and Gazzoli with a huge collision. Beautiful ball bending away across the face of the goal. Christine Lilly gets a good head on it, but just goes right to Cobain, unfortunately. And I need to give credit to Lori Fair finding uh, Angela Hughley's running through on that left side. Beautiful ball by Fair to set up that attack. Good look at Lori Fair. She's played very well in this tournament. As has her main sub, Tiffany Roberts. It seems like that defensive central midfield role is in very good hands for the U.S. Hugh Cleese to Fair. One minute of stoppage time has been added to this first half. Here's Kat Reddick, a good ball that continues a run. Lily does not play it to her. To Hugh Cleese, but the flag is up offside. I want to remind you that ESPN2 will wrap up its coverage of the WTA Ladies Kremlin Cup following our broadcast, Davenport Malaiva. Coming your way from Moscow. And we are in Cary, North Carolina right now, about 15 seconds left in the first half. Coming up the break, we'll have a look at the upcoming World Cup qualifying potential roster for the U.S. Highlights of the earlier game today from tournament play between Russia and Australia. Some nice goals in that one. And First half highlights from this one. This throw-in should just about do it. And it does. Well, this is unfamiliar territory for the state lately. Scoreless at the break. Brandy Chastain and the troops will have to regroup in the locker room. But again, the U.S. needs all, only a tie or a win, and that hardware will be theirs. Half time when we come back to Cary, North Carolina. Hey, go ahead. You've always got time for a Reese's fast break. Creamy Reese's peanut butter, nougat, covered in milk chocolate. Get lost in Reese's fast break.
Bud Light for three doors down? They're two doors down. No, it's for three doors down. Three doors down is two doors down. No, it's three doors down. Two doors down. Three doors down. Two doors down. They're no longer three doors down? They were never three doors down. So who's three doors down? How should I know? Three doors down? Two doors down. Thank you. Bud Light is proud to be part of the Three Doors Down 2002 World Tour. So you're telling me that Three Doors Down is actually Two Doors Down? No, actually they're now Five Doors Down. Millions of meters of network cable. 40,000 voice and data connections. One of the world's largest converged networks. Handling as much voice and data in one month as many companies do in a year. A network for the biggest sporting event on Earth. And who built it? Avaya. Connecting the FIFA World Cup. Cars you can depend on, the cars that last. Glad yeah. you're back with us in Cary, North Carolina, as the U.S. Women's National Team looks to extend their 10 game home unbeaten streak. Earlier action today from the Nike U.S. Women's Cup, Australia, Russia, 13th minute. Kelly Golbiowski, look at the set of moves by one and then rips a nasty left footer from 17 out, 1 0 Australia. Stay that way into the 43rd minute. Loose ball will find the boot of Joanne Peters, and boom, nice volley. 2-0 Australia. Russia really trying to amp up the pressure late in this game to get on the board. Look at these moves by Tatiana. Scott Nikova. Ah, couldn't pay it off, though, finding post in Australia. Post the shutout with the 2-0 win, so they earned their first points of the tournament. So Australia and Russia now tied for second place in the U.S. Women's Cup with three points. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the roster possibilities as the U.S. Women's National Team eyes upcoming World Cup qualification. Next time you're on the road and you need to fill your tank, here's something to consider. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposit buildup in your engine, which helps keep it clean. And a clean engine performs better. Which is why, when they're looking for more from their gasoline, so many drivers choose Shell. delivers more of it with movies inspired by actual events. I want those kids at every meeting so you can see just exactly who it is you're poisoning. The power of true stories. I bring my kid to you people for help and all you do is make them sicker. Lifetime Real Women, a new network from Lifetime. No one knows the world of women better. Lifetime Real Women, now available on digital cable from Time Warner. Looking for a way.
way to improve employee productivity? Call Roadrunner Business Class, the fastest way to connect your business to the Internet. What are you waiting for? Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina, the 10th all-time meeting between the U.S. and Italy. This is the final game for the states in this year's edition of the Nike U.S. Women's Cup. U.S. head coach April Heinrichs is in final roster decision mode as her squad prepares for a World Cup qualifying coming up later this month. The team sites squarely focused on a second straight World Cup title. We have to work together. We have to be active. And we have to work consistently on our team cohesion, both on and off the field. And um, in some respects, when they come together, it's that renewed friendship. So they're very enthused to be back together. But we also have to be inclusive. We're always bringing in new players and giving somebody a uh, look at the national team level. So we also we have to be inclusive with them and help make their transition easier. Of course, the inclusion involves subtraction. There's a lot of pressure mounting at every position. And in the nets, most likely two goalkeepers will go. Siri Monix, Brianna Scree at the top of that list right now, but they've got some good competition in the back line. Great new faces. Catherine Reddick putting some pressure on the back line, trying to get a spot. But Brandy Chastain, Joy Fawcett, Kate Sobrero got some of the positions locked up, it appears. Danielle Slayton, another newcomer, putting some pressure on those defenders. And in the midfield, Tiffany Roberts back on her game. But how about these youngsters? Kalupni, Allie Wagner, Hugh please. And of course, the mainstays, Lori Fair, Julie Fowdy, Christine Lilly, all those players on the top of their game. And up front, Mia Hamm, Cindy Parlow, Tiffany Milbritt, to name a few. But 17-year-old Heather O'Reilly's putting some pressure on these veterans. And let's not forget about Wambach, Tarpley, and McMillan. And this is what it's all for, World Cup qualifiers. The roster will be named in 48 hours for the 2003 World Cup qualifying event. The Gold Cup starts October 27th versus Mexico at the Rose Bowl. Mexico, Trinidad, Tobago, and Panama in the opening rounds. And the U.S. hopes to make it back to the Rose Bowl for the championship game on November 9th. And the two semifinalists qualify for the 2003 World Cup win. Wendy and I come back to Cary, North Carolina. We'll serve up the best from the first half. You know that thrill you get when you're scorching the turf, taking on the world to bring home the cup? There's always a first time. You can get into the Lego soccer sets. Now the action's kicked up to a whole new level. So with Lego, when you make it, you feel it. Lego soccer. Millions of meters of network cable. 40,000 voice and data connections. One of the world's largest converged networks. Handling as much voice and data in one month as many companies do in a year. A network for the biggest sporting event on Earth. And who built it? Avaya. Connecting the FIFA World Cup. Electronics, proud sponsor of the U.S. men's and women's soccer teams.
The U.S. had 2-0 leads in games one and two of this year's Nike U.S. Women's Cup, but at the break, they are tied with Italy 0-0. Glad you're back with us alongside Wendy Gabauer Palladino. I'm Rob Stone. Scoreless, but that's not to say the U.S. was without their opportunities to put one in the net today. Well, the U.S. has, uh, I would say, at times dominated the run of play, but they're not dominating the scoreboard. As you mentioned, it's 0-0, and uh, unfortunately, some near misses by the United States. A nice ball here into Parlo by McMillan. Parlo just doesn't take another touch to set up some more options for herself. Good save there by the Italian goalkeeper. And another miss here. Ball pops around, and Shane McMillan has a great chance to just finish it, and she doesn't. And then a bad defensive mistake here by Lori Fair sets up the Italians for a nice shot here by Ponico and Siri Molinix comes up with a good save and then a great opportunity, probably the best of the match for the U.S. Hugh please to Lily, great save by Kameen. You know what can remedy a goalless game? Yeah, Mia Hamm. She should be coming in to start the second half, the U.S. and Italy, when we return. This week on World News Tonight, cracking down on noise. Find out why you may be getting a little more peace and quiet. Plus, Americans, are they for or against going to war in Iraq? And sumo wrestling, the women who do it, on World News Tonight. Next time you're on the road and you need to fill your tank, here's something to consider. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposit buildup in your engine which helps keep it clean. And a clean engine performs better, which is why when they're looking for more from their gasoline, so many drivers choose Shell. taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. got time for a Reese's fast break. Creamy Reese's peanut butter. Nougat. Covered in milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's fast break. When you think of Italy, you think of food. Christopher Columbus. Food. Clothes. And food. Now when you think of Italy, think of Festa Italiana. A celebration of traditional Italian food, spirit, and culture. Sponsored by News 8 Austin. Enjoy authentic music, games, and samples from Austin's favorite Italian restaurants. If it's Italian, it'll be at Festa Italiana. Saturday and Sunday, October 12th and 13th at Fiesta Gardens. Information at News8Austin.com. Time Warner Digital Cable gives you the power to control movies. A mutating virus turns a team of scientists into flesh-eating zombies. Mindy, man. The corporation's keeping a few secrets down here. Start the thrills instantly and control the excitement with your digital remote. How oh, is she still standing? She isn't standing now. Order Resident Evil. Now with the power of eye control, only from Time Warner Digital Cable Movies On Demand. If you don't have digital, call Time Warner Cable now. And welcome back to SAS Stadium, Cary, North Carolina. We are set for second half kickoff between the U.S. and Italy, scoreless. And Mia Hamm with her first touch. She is off the bench. Four substitutions at the break for the States. Zero for Italy. We'll get to those subs in a moment. But first, this course of the match brought to you by Bud Light. There is Mia Hamm coming in for Shannon McMillan. Another offensive substitution, Abby Wambach in for Sidney Parlow. And two defensive tweaks, if you will. Tiffany Roberts is in. It appears that she is playing a central defensive midfield role. Lori Fair dropping back to a right fullback position, so Kate Sobrero out. And of course, the change in the nets that we knew was going to happen before this game. Brianna Scurry, who did not play Wednesday, is in, earning her 107th cap for the U.S. Women's National Team. So four subs for the U.S. We knew a lot were coming. 
somewhat surprised at Italy making no substitutions, but why should they? They had a tremendous first half. Angela Hucles, Foudy, play on. Here's Lori Fair, one-time ball, got under it, chipped it. Farelli heads it out, Foudy reclaims it. Here's Catherine Reddick, a first-half substitution. So wholesale subs by April Heinrichs to start the second half. I guess that's something that doesn't completely surprise us, though, Wendy, does it? Well, she, one of her goals in the game was to try and sub everybody, and the only player that we haven't seen now is Heather O'Reilly, and we got to figure she's probably going to get some time later on if this match lends itself to her coming in. But a couple things to point out. A lot of times when there's a, some wholesale subbing, it's kind of, kind of tough for a team to keep their rhythm and... Uh, speed of play going and what April wants to see is a familiarity and a feel for each other's tendencies out here. She wants this unit to look like it's the starting unit so they've got a good job ahead of them there. Also this defense needs to get comfortable with Brianna Scurry in the nets because Siri Molinix and Brianna Scurry are two very different goalkeepers. Siri Molinix very very good with her feet. Brianna Scurry much better in the air when she comes out but she likes to stay on her line a little more and Molinix loves to come out and dominate that box. So different tendencies and it's important for this defense to be able to play with both of those styles of goalkeeping. There's a good look at Scurry. Meanwhile, Lily flips Mia Hamm over the top on side. Hamm, Hughes, again. The states have got to finish those opportunities. Hughes is still down, though. That's a great service from Mia Hamm. That would have been her 114th career assist. Again, here's a look. Nice ball by Mia Hamm. Now, actually, the Italian defense had their hands up. You got to keep playing. Hamm takes it to the end line, finds a nice seam back here. Hughes runs through and kicks it over. She's got to lean down over that ball. That's a quick, quick redirect, although she's got a lot of pressure on her there. You see her take a knock at the end. But nice ball by Hamm. Very, very patient. Trying to set up Hughes on a nice run in the box. Again, Rob, the Italian defense is killing themselves by stopping and just expecting a call when they put their hands up in the air. This U.S. front line and midfield are so sophisticated in beating, in beating a trap, so to speak. They're not getting the offsides calls that they think they should get, but they got to keep playing through them. Julie Foudy comes to the sideline. Looks like she's having a uh, cleat issue. She changes her right boot. Lori Fair drills it, swings it to a wide open Cat Reddick. I like the quicker change of attack. First half, there was two to three passes to accomplish what one ball just did there. But of course, look at the player that's doing it. It's the player that was doing it out of that defensive midfield role all first half, and that's Lori Fair. Now she's playing on the right back position, and she's got that range, and she's constantly looking for a change of, change of point. A wide open Lily to receive this throw in. She is cracked from front and behind. A quick restart, two crees to Ham. Ham working Pirelli. Pirelli bumps her in the box. And it'll be a goal kick. That's a gutsy no call by Sonia Denencourt, who refereed the Olympic final. Probably a good no call, though. This portion of the match brought to you by Shell. Want to remind you to join ABC Sports later today for Eastern 1 Pacific for final round coverage of the LPGA Samsung World Championship. Sorenstam and Kerr with a three-shot lead after the third round. Well, this is a very important trip for Italy coming over here. This team usually does not get this much time to interact as a unit. Coaches having a lot of time to, to work on some training, some nutrition, some physical therapy type things. So a, a big trip for Carolina Maracci and her squad, and they're really kind of soaking it in right now. And plus, a lot of young players on this squad, and it's great for them to, to see how these U.S. players handle themselves on and off the field, treating themselves like professionals. Hey, if, if the U.S. does it one way, it's probably not a bad way to follow. They've had some success at this. Now that is not a successful ball, though. 
looking for Gazzoli, who's listed as a midfielder, but has snuck up to the attack oftentimes today. Here's Lori Fair. Hughley's back to Fair. And then back to Hughley's. Conti with Hughley's on her back. Morelli broken up by Fair. Here's Julie Fowdy. Wide open, Tiffany Roberts. Slid out of bounds, though, by Camborisa. Rob, I would say that the possession so far this half has been not too good for the United States. They're giving away, you know, square balls in the air sometimes, like that Brandon Chastain serve that created a, an opportunity there for Italy a moment ago. They just don't seem to be in sync yet, and that was one of the goals of April was when she does wholesale sub, she wants to make sure this new unit has a feel for, for each other's tendencies and, you know, look like they've, uh, they have the ability to play well together. And so far, they haven't settled down yet. Maybe some jitters by some players who don't necessarily get a lot of playing time. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Roberts really eluded her defender well there. Foudy floats the ball, looking for the big target, Abby Wambach. And Roberts comes all the way back through the midfield to almost win it. Aniko's ball broken up by Reddick. Lily plays into Chastain. This portion of the match brought to you by Shell. That's the nice one-time balls we're looking for. Lily cut. Nashville floats it over to hand. Stops. Serves. Good idea. And Mia giving some more instruction to Abby, say, go to that near post, go hard. Wambach drops it back. Tiffany Roberts. Fair. Nice step ups. Camparisa read that one all the way. Yeah, this Italian team has definitely come out with a lot of energy in their legs. They don't seem to be hurting much, got a good rest at halftime, and they're really coming after this U.S. team. But what a great position for them to be in, tied at halftime, tied going into the second half with the United States squad. That is a victory in itself. Again, the U.S. needs just a tie, and they will win this tournament. But I tell you what, a tie will be treated as a defeat by the U.S. camp. Here's Abby Wambach. She's been fairly productive on the national team level. This is her seventh game. She has four goals already. And there she is winning the ball back for the States. Angela Euclid fouled me. Rather, looking for Ham. She was offside play on. And Italy again goes for the long ball over the top, but it's Fawcett who wins it. Lily cuts into the middle of the park to Hugh Cleese. She swings it wide. Ham. Oh, dropped like she was hit by a sniper. Tough ball to handle, though. A lot of the balls right now going into these front runners in the air are just tough. They're not, they're not balls that they can easily take down. They're always under pressure. They've got defenders on their back. They need a little bit better touch on the ball. That's a nice one there. Flag up for the infraction. Ham earns the whistle. Here's a look here. Conti comes up. Just gets a nick on Ham, and Ham goes down. This is a good chance for the United States. Wambach great in the air on the back post. She's got Brady Chastain making a run in front of her, and Fowdy as well. Mia yeah, looking to remain unbeaten in Carolina. Mia with the service. Comeen punches it. Boney. Tino one times it though, right to Cat Reddick. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. Catherine Reddick came into camp late from the University of North Carolina. Did not play game one. And 
was a second half substitution in game two. Bowdy to Roberts. Double team, pokes it back to Chastain. Italy is playing aggressive and confident. It's one of those classic overmatched teams that the longer they hang in, the better they're gonna play. Well, it's not surprising to me that this Italian team is playing with so much passion and a never-die attitude because that's exactly where they are led by their coach, Maracci. If you ever had a chance to see her play, she was one of those passionate players and uh, she's instilled that spirit in this team and they're doing a great job. They're causing all kinds of problems for this U.S. In my opinion, the U.S. looks like they're not handling the pressure very well. They still need to be very composed. Just be patient, as April says. Be patient and the fruits of our labor will pay off for scoring opportunities. Lisa, out of bounds, throwing for the States. Let's go, it's Lori Fair showing her diversity today. Started in that central defensive midfield role, now moved wide right. But you're really seeing her attack a lot since moving to that right fullback position in the second half. And they have to be careful too because they've got to still maintain their shape. That's the critical thing about this defense is the shape. And if she goes and goes and goes, the Italians could end up in a situation where they've got numbers up on the U.S. defense. Here's Catherine Reddick on the ball. What have been your impressions of her through this tournament? Well, I think this half, actually, it seems like going in. I thought she did, you know, decent in the first half, but the second half, she seems to be a bit jittery. She's forcing some serves, and she's got a great touch on the ball. Again, she just seems to be not taking as much time as she needs. She just needs to be patient, and the serves will come. defending by the Italians, Lily offside. Mia Hamm started the second half. Italy found her right away and decided to show her the turf. Mia Hamm is always a marked woman. And again, a tactical decision by April Heinrichs to bring her in and halftime with fresh legs and trying to go at this Italian defense and they've got a lot that they're showing back to her. Hamm's a bit frustrated. She's still working though for her opportunities. Anytime she's in and around the box, she's she can't get through them. She's going to go down and, in some cases, create a free kick opportunity, which is always very dangerous for the United States. Brandy Chastain had a penalty kick goal Wednesday night. Too tall for Hugh, please. There's Chastain again. Behind Euclid, finds Wombach, spins to Angela Euclid, stood up, double team, Wombach steps up, didn't get all of that one, easy save for Comey. Fourth shot on goal for the U.S. Tenth shot overall, though. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. Saw Abby Wambach there, number 22. What type of things, Wendy, does Abby need to do to take her game to the next level? Well, I think one thing that uh, Ham was trying to find her on that near post run, she just needs to really make sure she's on top of her runs in the box, which she does fairly well. Typically, they're f they can find her in the air because she gets herself free down the, the center of the box. But I just think she needs to keep working hard. She's got to... Take, the, take her opportunities when she's on the field and work every minute of those opportunities. So no lapses, continue to work. And uh, you know, she's got fresh legs coming in at halftime. But she's, she is committed to it. It's just, you know, I think it's a matter of getting her as much international experience as they can. One strike against her. She's definitely not a 90 minute player right now, according to the staff. Her, her fitness needs to be elevated. And if it's always dicey to start somebody who you know can't finish the game. So she's almost played herself into a sub role. Well, and you know that she's, you know, not going to be content with that forever and probably not content with that now. 
uh, but one thing that you can say about fitness is that's something that the players take a look here. I'll come back to my point. Pam again, she's just getting leveled. It's how Italy's not giving her any time and space. Tatiana Zori earns the first card of the game. Well deserved, I might add. But Rob, you know you can you can uh, take a an attribute like fitness and you can work on it at home without anyone around. You know, when no one else is watching, go ahead and get a fitness plan put together so that she can come in at another level at the next camp. And part of it is your size. It's just harder for the bigger players to be able to carry themselves for 90 minutes and the forwards just get hacked on all game long. So not only physically working through that pressure, but as well aerobically. And the foul, can she save it? Yes. And Hughley comes storming in to earn a corner kick for the state. Good hustle by Angela Hughley in just her sixth appearance for the red, white, and blue. And that hustle picked up this crowd as well. Third corner of the game for the Stakes. This works in the match. is brought to you by Chevrolet. Mia Hamm will strike the corner. <laughs> Near post again, Fawcett could cleanly flick it on. And Italy able to clear it out and withstand that attack. <laughs> Reddick gets it in right away, over the top throw in, finds Julie Foudy, back to Mia Hamm. The U.S. has never lost and never been tied during U.S. Women's Cup competition. Seven-time champion, look at the goals scored versus goals allowed, 104 to 10. Staggering numbers. Of course, for the U.S., that 104 to 10 number has stayed put through this game. Fourth corner of the game for the U.S. Short corner for Foudy and Ham. A lot of jostling going on in, in and around the goal there. Foudy puts it in. Exactly her job. We'll take a look here from the Phillips goal cam. Christine Lilly getting in front of the keeper and she sends it home. Beautifully played by Lil. With that goal, Christine Lilly is now tied to Shell Akers with 247 career points, number two all time in the U.S. books. Congratulations, Christine Lilly. This portion of the match brought to you by Kit Kat. Let's see how this first goal changes the mentality of both teams. Julie Fowdy swings it to the collegiate Catherine Reddick, one of two college players on the roster, Allie Wagner the other. There's also a high school player, Heather O'Reilly, who's on the bench and has just received her sub card and will be coming in momentarily. You'd have to think she'd probably be coming in for Angela Pukles and we might drop Pam back to that offensive central midfield role, but we'll find out what April Heinrichs has. O'Reilly, a offside is probably going to let that one go. O'Reilly, a great future, just a senior in high school. There you see Lily now tied with Michelle Akers. She's got a long way to go to catch her teammate, Mia Hamm, though. There is Lily. Sharon, ready. You know, and Rob, at halftime, we talked about the uh, inclusion of some of these young players, and uh, it does put a lot of pressure on some of these veteran players trying to keep their spots. Well, somebody looking to put some pressure on the Mets. It's Kelly Wilson, today's Lego building starts tomorrow. U19 phenom plays her college ball at the University of Texas. Look at that. 
31 goals in 19 U19 matches, had nine goals and one helper at the FIFA World Championships, which the U.S. recently won in Canada. There's just a stream of young talent waiting in the wings for April Heinrichs. Angela Hughes is subbed out. And Mia Hamm does move back to that offensive midfield position. So up top, it's now O'Reilly and Wambach. Between them, they have 14 international appearances with the senior national team. O'Reilly brings great pace and energy to this team. Here's Mia Hamm. Yep. O'Reilly tried to play that, ended up stepping on it. Italy ready to make their first substitutions of the game. Here's Ilaria Pasqui. And Margarita Mazia, number five, also coming in for Italy. open on the right and she uses that option. Long back, back to Roberts. Fair. Foudy to service. Broken up by Conti. This portion of the match brought to you by Kit Kat. We are live at SAS Stadium in Cary, North Carolina. The third and final game of the Nike U.S. Women's Cup for the U.S. Women's National Team as they take on Italy. The 10th all-time meeting between these two teams alongside Wendy Gabara Palladino. I'm Rob Stone. Christine Lilly with the ball right now with the game's only goal back in the 64th minute. Could we have a second one? Heather O'Reilly, the event her first international goal with the senior team, and it's 2-0 U.S. for a senior in high school. Here's Heather O'Reilly. She's working to get herself free on this back post. Now watch her run. Look at her, she's wide open timing. It almost got off sides there. Takes some time with some pressure. Beautiful volley into the back of the net. That's big time. That's high level tactically getting herself open on that back post. Great to see Heather O'Reilly making a stamp on her game and um, certainly gives the US a little bit more breathing room being up 2-0. The USA by number 27, Heather O'Reilly. Julie Foudy with her second assist of the game, and here's Foudy streaming through, finds Wamba. Abby Wamba. first international goal. Service for post, Lily crashing, looking for her second. No luck. This portion of the match brought to you by Lego. The present and the future with goals today for the U.S. Women's National Team. Julie Foudy with two assists. She is the player that has really stepped up her game and figured out a way to make a difference, getting two assists for the United States. Pasqui bumped off by Reddick. It's the service. Loose ball. Panico almost made something out of that. Sturridge's first real test. There's O'Reilly, her first career international goal in the 69th minute to make it 2-0 U.S. Folks back in East Brunswick, New Jersey, willing to bet you're smiling and still enjoying that one. Makes me feel like uh, I haven't done so much with my life, huh? Got a high school girl scoring goals on the international level. What was I doing when I was a senior in high school? 
He's trying to get above 125 pounds. That's what I was trying to do. That was strong deep. Well, it's neat to see O'Reilly and, you know, the whole story following the U19 World Championship, it was just awesome to see the job that Tracy Leone did with these uh, young players and, and the experience that they got and the pressure that they faced in that World Championship event this summer has elevated them to levels at such a young age. The sophistication of Heather O'Reilly's run there on that goal to get herself open, that's big time, that's high level. And a lot of credit to Tracy Leone for the job she's done. And not only motivating them, but having, giving them an unbelievable, in-depth understanding of this game of soccer. I haven't seen a sophisticated a player, or sophisticated set of sophisticated players like this in a long, long time. Probably dates back to, as a whole, probably when Julie Foudy, Christine Lilly, and Mia Hamm were coming out. Abby Wambach plays it off her defender to earn a corner kick for the U.S. That'll be their fifth of the game. See Wambach almost kind of playing a right wing type position today. We're used to or more accustomed to seeing her in the middle and camping out and doing her damage in the box. Willard. One goal. And now the service. Drilled at far post. Foudy, the header. O'Reilly almost had a second. Fawcett has her third for the day. 3 0 U.S. Floodgates have opened. Three goals in the last eight minutes. It's now a rout. Sometimes finding the back of the net is just a matter of keeping the ball alive and making smart decisions. Look at Julie Fowler. She can't finish from there, but she sends it into the mix. Flick by O'Reilly and another flick by Fawcett. And the ball's in the back of the net. That is beautifully executed. Here's our Phillips goal cam look. And there's Joy Fawcett getting on the very end of it. 3-0 United States over Italy. Joy Fawcett, her 25th international goal. Didn't exactly break the net, but all it has to do is cross that line. Goal scored by the USA's number 14. So Heather O'Reilly, the senior high school player from New Jersey with a goal and an assist coming off the bench in the second half. Remember, this was 0-0 at the break. <laughs> This portion of the match brought to you by Nike, who is also sponsoring this tournament. And I'm willing to bet U.S. Soccer Federation officials who are here in attendance, Dr. Bob Contagulia, the president, Dan Flynn, getting set to find the cup and position themselves for the presentation. Again, the U.S. needed only a tie today, and they would win the Nike U.S. Women's Cup. They're getting more than that right now. Flighted ball, scurry off her line. Well played. That's not the type of goaltending that she's been, or at least that we've been accustomed to seeing from her. Well, lately she's bobbled some of those balls. Again, the, a week ago against Russia, she had some, uh, some balls that she had trouble handling, but uh, looks like she's very solid today. Pasqui, bumped off by Lilly. And Fowdy intercepts it. Lily. I think Italy's starting to grow tired, too. That defensive pressure that we saw so much throughout this game has somewhat waned. Here's Lori Fair. Driven, looking for O'Reilly. Snapped out by Comey. Tatino intercepted by Catherine Reddick. Quickly plays it to Lily. And the O'Reilly factor gets it. Uh, that's a case of the youngster thinking that Christine Lilly's got legs to keep running and running and running all day. And Lilly didn't quite have it in her tank at that moment. And on this last attack here, Fair comes in, 
beautiful ball into the box, and look at Kameen coming up. She had to make that play because Heather O'Reilly was on the back post there, ready to get ahead on that ball. It looked like she might have even hurt her shoulder a little bit coming out for that ball. Kameen cannot be faulted for any of the goals she's allowed today. Well, there's no question this, this Italian side has had some of the wind taken out of their sails. Started to see it after the first goal. That's all the U.S. needed was to get on the scoreboard. Just doesn't necessarily matter if you dominate the field of play if you're not putting the numbers on the scoreboard. Mia Hill, 4 take it down. It could be with this PK. Let's see if Colleen gets a card. A lot of instances you'll see that. Great ball by Tiffany Roberts, finding her teammate through him, looks up, jukes the keeper. Kameen says, oh my gosh, I gotta slow her down. Takes her down to slow her down. And the result is a PK. We saw Brandy Chastain take the penalty kick on Wednesday, and she lines up again. She went with placement over power Wednesday, and barely snuck it in, had some help from the goalie to deflect it off the post. Let's see what she goes with today. Again, placement for OUS. Brandy Chastain, her 28th international goal, second in as many matches. The PK was brought to you by Ham's hard work, and Kameen, only option is to take her down. Chastain steps up, and you know what? This is unsavable. No goalkeeper's going to get there. She tucks it in about three inches inside that post. Italy making a sub. Campo Risa comes off, and Pelazera comes in. portion of the match brought to you by Avaya. What was once in doubt is now a certain. The U.S. will win this game, and they will win their eighth U.S. Women's Cup. The updated numbers, 45 goals, and this the 18th year of the women's national team program. They've now scored 924 goals through their history. There's Lily. Cuts inside. Given space. Wombach. Bumped off and poked away. Pasqui gets by Reddick. Chastain, the recent goal scorer, is there to clean it up to Fowdy. There's Mia Hamm, back to Julie Foudy. Has a wide open Tiffany Roberts on the right side and uses her. There's so much space here for the defensive midfielders for the U.S. to work out of. The Italy, Italian front runners are just standing. They're walking. They're exhausted. The, the midfielders are actually dropping back, and there's a wide open crevice here for the U.S. to play make in. I want to remind you, coming up after this broadcast, ESPN2 will wrap up its coverage of the WTA 2002 Kremlin Cup. Lindsay Davenport in the final. We'll see that live for Eastern 1 Pacific here on ESPN2. Zori again trying to go over the top, but it's Fawcett. <laughs> When Italy looks up, they just don't have any options. This low restraining line for the U.S. kind of lulls them into some possession. The U.S. defense is actually compressing the field so much, most of the players are probably within about a 40-yard width. Ham, love that move. Cuts right, drops it to O'Reilly. Offside flag. Now our Kit Kat break of the game, Christine Lilly opening up the floodgates. And the assist goes to Julie Fowley. Look at Lilly getting herself open, playing that position so well. She's just trying to deflect anything that comes in front of the keeper on the corner kick, and she sends it home. 
at your Kit Kat break of the game. Christine Lilly, the game's first goal in the 64th minute, her 89th career finish for the U.S. Lori Fair, little giddy up, Wombach diving at a near post header. Lilly take it down by Guarino. Wearing the captain's armband. Had a goal Wednesday versus Russia. you by Bud Light. That's one of those, hey, thanks, coach, for putting me in as the U.S. buzzsaw is just slicing through the D right now. Bernosi would be safer on the bench. possession. Now, Wendy, what has impressed you about the U.S. team, especially the second half? Well, one of the things that's impressed me is the play of Julie Fowley. She's, just, she's found a way to make a difference and uh, had, a, had a hand on three of the four goals. First three, actually, which, which has definitely taken the wind out of the sails of, uh, of this Italian team. Before that, you know, I mean, a defensive breakdown, and the Italy could easily be knocking on the U.S.'s door. So I think the play of her has been great. I think Heather O'Reilly has been, has had an amazing impact, goal and an assist in her, you know, this early in her career. So that's fun to see as well. But for the most part, this second half, half team, I think, has done a good job of playing very well together. Good, good speed of pay, good spe speed of play, and they've organized well offensively and defensively. Here's Abby Wambach. Tiffany Roberts. Swings it. Cat Reddick. And Bernosi brings it home. We're talking about Julie Fowdy's play. And Maple Heinrich said she was committed to having Julie play that wide right type of midfield position in this diamond, but looks like she's more central right now. Well, I think initially she's had to make some changes, obviously, with uh, Hughley's coming out, and, and uh, she's just adjusted things a little bit in order to compensate for that. But that's the good thing about the system is it shows the versatility of these players. I mean, you've got, we've in this attacking uh, center midfield role, we've seen a number of players. You've seen Parlo, you've seen Ham, Hughley's, Ali Wagner, O'Reilly. So it'll also, the system affords itself to, to showing the diversity and, and talents of her players. I've also been impressed with Brianna Scurry. She's been solid. She hasn't been tested a whole lot, but when she's come out and had to make a play, she's just been real solid. There's Mia Hamm spinning, finding foul. Julie giving ample room to find O'Reilly. Heather, Christine Lilly. One-time service, back post. Abby Wambach in pursuit, couldn't quite get there. Played well by Carla Bernosi. Red up well to win that header. Oh, 
first yeah. half, although uh, April, when we had her in headsets, was saying that it's tough to replicate a peak performance game after game, but I think that some of her players have individually have had peak performances. Foudy, I think Lily's had a great game. you got to figure Heather O'Reilly's had her best performance so far with the full national team. Panico attacking, Chastain bumps her. Guarino intercepted by Fawcett. Italy's not attacking with numbers at all. It's pretty much 2v5 or 6. Not going to get many scoring opportunities with numbers like that. This portion match brought to you by Chevrolet. Over the top to O'Reilly. Service deflected to Abby Lombach in the box. Looking for options back to O'Reilly. She drills one. Looking for Roberts, cleared out to Julie Fowdy. Julie pops it over the top, Tiffany Roberts in an offside position. Tuesday night at 8, it's an all-new episode of Beg, Borrow, and Deal. Team Contact in Richmond doing auto racing. Team Kobe heads to hockey town for some hockey-type things. Beg, Borrow, and Deal, presented by Miller Lite Tuesday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Oh, over the top, finds Panico. Joey Fawcett puts an end to that. All four U.S. goals coming in a 14-minute stretch from the 64th to the 78th minute. Lily, O'Reilly, Fawcett, Chastain. There's Mia Hamm. She has no points today, but she has certainly been a factor off the bench. Sparking this U.S. team, it was 0-0 at the break. Lori Fair. O'Reilly. Hamm. for the states. What type of things does the U.S. need to work on because their next event is World Cup qualification. They gather October 21st in San Diego. Six days later, they open up versus Mexico in the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Well, I would say that at that moment when they uh, get into training camp, they got to be physically the top of their fitness levels and we talked about that with a player like Wambach and some of the others that need to just deepen their base they've got some time to work on it but Rob you can bet that this tournament takes its toll and they're ready for a little bit of a break now to spend some time with family and friends and, and try and actually get refreshed through a little bit of rest as well. They're not going to get to that break right away though they're going to stay in town tonight and do some celebrate. Lily Chastain has Mia drops a tour one time effort outside of the right boot. Still in bounds. Lily try to tuck that one near post to Fawcett. No connection there. Actually, a number of the players are in next weekend. Mia's got her uh, foundation golf classic tournament. And so I guess they'll, they'll continue to be on the road, some of them will, but coming in to, uh, to help raise awareness for uh, the disease that her brother was uh, battling with, leukemia. So a great cause. It's neat to see them come together for a cause like that. Two minutes of stoppage time have been added to this one. The result not in question. As the U.S. is just knocking it around right now, toying with the Italians. Roberts, a little burst of speed in the box, take it down. That is right on the line, and let's see, they're going to rule it. Free kick outside of the box. Italy will make another substitution. Maria. Jackie. Will come in. Sierra Malio comes off. Sierra Malio coming on the field. Number two, Moira Flaki. Flaki got her hustle to get in there before this free kick is taken. Chastain rips one, dipping over the bar. So 
the U.S. will go 6-4 and all-time versus Italy. And for the year, go to 10-2-2, two two, both of their defeats coming at the hands of Norway. Tiffany Roberts, Heather O'Reilly, golden assist for the senior in high school. Oh, nice little flick by Roberts. O'Reilly looking for Wambach. They could not connect. About 40 seconds left in this one. Following our broadcast, we'll send it to Moscow for WTA tennis. For now, we're still in Cary, North Carolina. Conti double teamed deep. And that'll be a throw in for the Italians. U.S. women next in action, October 27th at the Rose Bowl. They take on Mexico, game one of the CONCACAF Gold Cup. And that's all she wrote, all over but the shout of the U.S. in convincing fashion. And they take their eighth consecutive Nike U.S. Women's Cup title. Our Chevrolet woman of the match. Why not? The youngster, Heather O'Reilly from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Her first career international goal, and she had an assist to top it off. Congratulations, Heather, our Chevrolet woman of the match. It was 0-0 at the break, but Lily O'Reilly, Fawcett, Chastain, Chains Dahl, that in the second half. The U.S. continues their unbeaten run here at the Women's Cup. We'll be back to wrap it up. Cars you can depend on, the cars that last. Wow, that is so cool. Can he do it again? Sure, you'll get one, boy. Okay, so where does he get him? Yeah, I don't know. Get down! A great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Oh, that's a first. Make it a Bud Light. On an all-new Bank Barrow and Deal, while Team Kobe tries to score in the Motor City. All this for one task. Team Contact makes a pit stop in Richmond. We are definitely going to hit up NASCAR. Bank Barrow and Deal, the new series from ESPN, Tuesday at 8. Lately, we've noticed many of you boasting about your fresh bread. Funny, we thought that's how bread is supposed to be served. But since being painfully obvious is the name of the game... Attention consumers, our delicious seven grain honey wheat bread is made with honey from real live bees and seven natural grains that were grown on a farm by farmers with tractors. And we bake it in ovens using genuine heat. Ah, fresh. Jimmy John, gourmet sandwiches. With Time Warrior, you get more premium movie channels. Greater variety. Get to raise their eighth consecutive Nike U.S. Women's Cup. Make sure to turn into ABC Sports for more upcoming soccer action. Sunday, October 20th, live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's MLS Cup live at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next year on ESPN2, WTA Tennis. It's the Kremlin Cup live from Moscow, Russia. Lindsey Davenport in the final of that one. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Wendy Gabauer, Paladino, and our ESPN2 crew, I'm Rob Stone. Our final score from Cary, North Carolina. U.S. wins it 4-0 to win their eighth straight U.S. Women's Cup. Mia Hamm, the MVP of this year's Nike U.S. Women's Cup. Thanks again for joining us. Good day from Cary. Moscow, Russia, a city forever associated with intrigue